Welcome back to the podcast and YouTube channel, The Iconic. I'm your host, Courtney Todd, and today we have returning guest, Ashley Antidormi, talking to us about how to prepare for a vacation as an entrepreneur. So thank you so much for coming back, Ash. I'm so excited to have you on. Cheers, and can't wait to talk. Cheers. Thanks for having me. So today we are talking about three tips to prepare for a vacation as an entrepreneur. So with you traveling literally like every other day, I thought you'd be the best person to talk about this with. Um, For anybody who hasn't had the chance to listen to our first episode, if you haven't listened to it, go listen to it now. It'll just get a better idea of Ashley and their business. Um, But you don't have to. You can listen to that second after this episode. But For anybody that hasn't listened to that episode, can you tell them a bit about who you are and the business you own? Yeah, for sure. So thank you again for having me on for a second time. Always love chatting with you. Um, So I'm Ashley Antidormi. I uh, co-founded a short-term rental property management company called Travel Lux with three other people, one of them being Spencer, who is my partner. Um, That has grown to over about 60 clients across Canada and the only like three years, so it's grown really quickly. Uh, We left our corporate jobs uh, in 2021 and 2022 to focus on this full time. And then on the side, we do our own real estate investing, uh, predominantly in short-term rentals. I love that. And for the audience to get like a better idea of how much you travel, can you explain how many trips you went even like last year or already? It's what, just the beginning of April now, and I think you've been away more than you've been home this year. Is that true? <laughs> it, it seems like it. <laughs> um, so last year was our big travel year because we were both out of our jobs. We yeah. didn't have that three to four weeks of vacation constraint. And we've always loved to travel. Like that was our main driver for getting into the business that we were in because we love to travel so yeah. much. So last year, I think we were away like something like 12 or 13 weeks. It wow. was crazy. This year, (laughs) we were away for probably about six. Already. Already. Yeah, and it's April. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. I love that. (laughs) So, and I feel like I, when John and I first met, that was kind of like our traveling time. I feel like the first year to two years being together, we really went in with a bang. And now we we still travel often. Um, It's like we said, it's April. We went away in December, January, and March. So... Each time we've went away, we've had different experiences on how to prepare the business before we go. And each trip I've been on has been completely different. And I feel like in the way of getting ready for that trip, preparing the team, trying to, because for you, I think the differences between you and I right now is when you go away, you're going away for a long period of time. So you're still working a lot while you're there. And for me, I feel like the way that we're traveling a lot right now is we'll when we went to Paris, it was a collaboration where we did work for a good amount of time, but then we enjoyed the rest of it. So the work we were doing wasn't in my social media management business, but it was collaboration work, which was the reason that brought us to Paris with Miami. We went to Miami to work with a hotel. So it's like the work that I was doing was different than my business work for social media management, which is my full-time job. So I had to make sure that the team was well taken care of and knew what was going on before we even left to to still be successful and my clients to still have success and all that. But for you, when you were talking about, you said like before the show, you talked on how you still work on your business while you're traveling. So I think it'll be really great for to, to bring this insight to the people that have their own business and want to go away and deal even if they're looking for how to prepare before they go away and they're like, I'm going to do no work on this vacation. Or if they're like, I'm going to go away and it's going to be a work trip and you do your work, but from like a way better scenery rather than your home office to being somewhere really cool. So I want to ask you, can you provide a tip for entrepreneurs on how to prepare for going on a vacation before they've even left? Yeah, absolutely. And like, as you said, we like to go away for a long period of time. Um, we've been going on like month long trips. The last few have been at least three to five weeks, which we really, wow. really love. So we've had to travel different. And when we first started going away, it was similar to, I think more what you and John were doing, where you would do some like batch work and then enjoy the rest. Mm-hmm. Um, but we found that we were just sprinting the whole time and we came back exhausted. Yeah. So we talked and we're like, look, we don't, we have structured the business in such a way that we do not need to work on Eastern Standard Time. 
which is exactly what we wanted. And it was, it wasn't that the business just happened to be like that. It was, we didn't want to work on Eastern standard time. So we created a business where we didn't have to do that, but work still has to get done. Right. So instead of feeling like we were either missing things in locations or, um, like not working, which Mm -hmm. we hated the feeling of both. That's why we extended our travel. So now we can work half the day and then look, go and explore half the day. And we feel like we're accomplishing both work and then play. Right. So I think because of where we go and how long we go for the biggest thing that we do with our team is tell them exactly how the time difference between where we are here and then where we're going to be and exactly on which days. So before we even left our last trip, because it was predominantly Southeast Asia, we were like, okay, so when we're in Tokyo, we're going to be exactly 11 hours ahead or whatever it was, 14 hours ahead. And then when we go to Vietnam, we're going to be 12 hours ahead and here are the times. And on top of that, we structured when they could contact us because we really didn't someone didn't want someone on our team to contact us at like 10 a.m. or like 12 p.m. But that's like midnight our time mm-hmm. and wondering why they weren't getting a response. a response. Right. So we would say, OK, we're available for meetings between seven and ten. That's right? awesome. And I feel like that's your check in time. Yes. Like, hey, like and I think that's something even like traveling or not that I've learned with my business. It's like. If I don't do check-in times, I will sit down to do one task and then be carried away in the day-to-day because Mm -hmm. I'm just replying on, we use WhatsApp for my team, my clients, and I could just get carried away with talking to my team members that have a list of duties that they're working on that day. And then I'll just get carried away because I'm there. And I'm like, okay, this isn't really a good play. So if here's my check-in time and I have two check-in times a day and they're one hour. So it's like for you, you know, you set when you're traveling, you have that check-in time where it could be what, like one to three hours ish a day. Usually. Cool. And then it's like, you have the check-in time. People can know like, Hey, I have a question for Spencer and Ashley. I'm going to ask them then. And then they know that they're going to get a response. And do you take client meetings when you're traveling? We do. Um, clients always come first. Uh, we, we set up our people and our team so that they are their point of contact always so that that will never change yeah however there are times when clients do want meetings we just structure them around like are you free thursday between 7 p.m and 10 or yeah. whatever knowing that that's likely around 8 a.m or whatever their mm-hmm. time so okay that makes sense and i like how you said that like clients come first do you tell your clients when you're going on a trip we don't um we have so many, we're not their point of contact. And we've worked on that over mm-hmm. the past year yeah. where they may know who we are. We may say certain things right at the beginning and talk, but that we typically haven't met. Um, and their point of contact from day one is their territory manager. So in Niagara, that will be Amanda. Mm-hmm. And she is their number one contact. So if they have a question, they always put it to Amanda. And if Amanda can't answer it, she'll say, hey, can you email um travel x property management gmail.com and address like ashley or something yeah. because that's my realm of expertise or they'll tag one of us specifically so like spencer with pricing is kind of like our rev man and our guru with that so if they have a question really specific around that then he'll hop on but we don't really tell them where we are usually if we have a meeting with them and we're somewhere else they'll be like hey it's really dark in your background but the sun's just coming up in mine right so they yeah, ask and yeah. then we'll, we'll say but since it doesn't affect anything we don't we don't say it and i like that you do it like that because i remember like at the beginning so maybe like a year ago in my business when i was only had one team member and now for social media i have two social media managers but we're a team of seven now so it's like with that when i had one team member it was that iffy feeling of do I tell them I'm going away? This doesn't affect what they're getting because when I only had one, I knew I was still doing the work, but it was just me doing it rather than my team doing it. Where it's like, if I'm away now, I have two social media managers that work full time. They work between their schedules. There's somebody working seven days a week. So I don't need to like, it doesn't matter if I'm in China right now, they're still getting exactly what they signed up for, you know, my clients. And yeah. I have people in place, like you said, doing doing that task. But I remember when I first started the business, it was like, or like when I just even had one person, I was really caught in between of like, do I tell my clients that I'm going away? Because I want them to be able to send me a message if they need something. 
if I'm away or if I'm not, you know what I mean? I want them to know that I will respond and get back to them as soon as I see that message. Like I said, no matter where I am in the world, but it's like, I've always decided with knowing, with feeling like that, I decided to not tell them about going away because I looked at it as my vacation shouldn't impact their experience. So yeah, it makes, it makes sense that that's what you do for your business and your business, obviously our businesses are very different. Mm -hmm. And I don't think even when, before we had like an Amanda who actually did it before it was just Spencer and I running our entire portfolio. I don't even think we told our clients then that we were going away because I totally agree with you. Like we feel like they like are paying us for a service and because we chose to go away, it shouldn't impact their experience. Exactly. So completely agree with that. Um, so what tips do you think you have? Because our businesses are very, very different, right? So how we structure before we go away is totally different. So like, what do you do with yours? I feel like a tip that I have is to be, is to make sure myself and my team is organized or as organized as possible, because I feel like when a trip is coming up, obviously John and I have planned it pretty in advance because we're not traveling too much. So the trips that are, it's at least a few weeks in advance. So with knowing this, my week before the trip is like, you're like, we're in overtime where it's like, okay, like I prop with my team, we'll schedule a meeting. I like meetings face to face, like side note, but we'll schedule a meeting and we'll just be like, does anybody need anything as of now? We talk about the meeting, the overall like week coming up, um, my check-in times again, if there's any time change, what that'll look like. I feel like your next tip will be the perfect add on to what I just said. Um, so can you share that with everybody? Yeah. So I think one of our main ones was always having like a second you or like your person who is going to act as you while you're away. So this person will make decisions if they have to, especially during the times when they know, okay, like Spencer and Ashley are sleeping and can't reply, but this needs to be made now. Mm -hmm. It's someone that we trust that is now everyone's point of contact. So how did you find that person? Because again, like being an owner in the business, I'm trust is always my biggest problem, right? Like I trust my entire team, but how do you designate that person to do that for you? It took, it took a while. Um, for us, it's Amanda for sure. Just because she's been in it for years now, Mm -hmm. she knows. And honestly, and this should be true of literally anyone on your staff. Eventually she knows more than we do. We may know the overarching, we may know the business side, but on the day to day, the properties, the clients, we are very much removed we haven't been in half the property client properties that we have, but she has our onboarding coordinator, Adriana has, they are the experts. So why not let them be the experts? Right. Because there are times if a client said, Hey, do you know where this is in the house? If they asked me, I'd be like, I haven't even been there. I would just ask Amanda anyway. Like she is the expert and she knows, she knows the parameters around like what she can answer and what she can't. She's likely not going to ask, about or like answer anything about pricing strategy because unless it's like super broad because that's really our realm of expertise um but if any other little details she has the client the uh, relationship with our cleaners all of our contractors maintenance she has the best relationship with them she is the best person to respond and for do you have any examples you can provide like if on how you would handle a situation if maybe her somebody else gave advice that you or did something that you necessarily wouldn't do and like how do you handle that like one you're trusting your team to do this people are human they're going to make mistakes but as the owners like what is something that you've done to help resolve the solution or resolve the problem or even even if there wasn't a problem but like if you're like oh I would have done this differently like how do you deal with that so that happens obviously again everyone's human Um, and this is really important as a manager, especially with someone who you're working with Mm -hmm. and how you respond. And I'm a very big advocate of not undermining someone that who's working with me Mm -hmm. because that's terrible. It looks bad to the client. It feels bad to them. And I, it's a crappy feeling. It's happened to me before. I'm never going to do that. Yeah. So if Amanda say Amanda said something that we wouldn't agree with, we would just go right to her and say, hey, you said this. I understand why you said this, but this is actually the correct thing. If it's really big and needs to be corrected and that's happened, mm-hmm. 
I will tell her to correct herself. Um, I won't step in because I think that just looks really bad. Um, and it just, at that point, it's a coaching opportunity. And Spencer and I see that as a failure in management. Obviously we failed to give her the correct information yeah. or we failed to make her feel confident enough to give the correct information. So how can we be better as managers in the future so that this doesn't happen? And then we go to her and say, Hey, this is like even a big mistake or a minor mistake. Yeah. How do we ensure this doesn't happen in the future? And she might say, Hey, I actually do really well with written processes, which <laughs> Spencer and I don't do well with doing because mm -hmm. it's a boring task. Right. Yeah. Lengthy. So it's lengthy and not everyone's built to do that yeah. stuff and we're, we're not. So we're like, okay, this is what she needs. So I'll write one. Yeah. Like an SOP, a standard, standard operating Absolutely. procedure. Yep. And again, I think like the, cause I can totally agree with what you're saying. The mistakes that ever like get make aren't necessarily, so obviously there's some mistakes, but then there's ones where it's just like you cringe a little bit cause you would say something different but you haven't provided that information on what they should have said instead. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's like you said, an opportunity to be like, message them privately. If it's like in a group chat or something, message them privately. Hey, I see why you said this next time. Just say this, like, again, like for my business where this is our, our busy season is approaching, which is, which includes like onboarding more clients. So I'm like, we need to get an onboarding SOP created Shannon and Rebecca are the ones on doing so much work of the onboarding. So I'm like, you create this SOP and then I'll, again, I'll edit it. I'll look at it, review it. I've onboarded enough clients to know what is missing, what goes on, but it also then goes to them and sh like makes them think that they're not missing anything because they have already onboarded clients. So now we're just making a process out of it for when we hire the third social media manager, here you go. It's everything you need to know in this little Bible. So I totally agree with what you're saying. Um, for going on the trips, do you have like any additional information or advice you would give to anybody that maybe is an entrepreneur and hasn't gone on their first trip and they're scared? I don't want to leave my business. Do you have any overall advice that you would give them? I think honestly, just like having fun. Mm -hmm. I think especially the first one, it's hard because you're, you're not maybe doing the day to day, but yeah. I know for us, we were like, literally, we might as well have been because we were in every message. We were micromanaging every response back to guests or to clients. Et so when was that? I was probably in maybe just after I left my job sometime in 2021. Okay. And then what changed from that to how you are now? So we started this because we love to travel right. and we love to travel because we love to explore. We love to meet new people, all of that. Yeah. And I don't want to feel stressed. And, and back when there was a corporate job, you took those three or four weeks of vacation to get stress relief. Right. But we found we were going away and coming back like more stressed. Right. And we didn't want to feel like that anymore. So we're like, okay, what, what can we give off to other people? And then we started changing up our trips. Like now, instead of staying in a place for three days, we stay for six or seven because we know like having a routine for us is massive. So yeah. it's usually like get up, go to the gym, get breakfast, work from like 11 to one yeah. and do some deep work and then have the rest of the day to do whatever we want. And that's, and that works out really, really well. It's just when you're hopping everywhere, two days here, two days there, yeah. you feel like you can't do that. And I think even being away, there's certain days where we'll tell the team like, Hey guys, tomorrow we're not going to be able to be able to respond at all. Yeah. Because it's, it's like a day off yeah. and you're allowed to take days off. That's exactly it. It's right? like a forced day off because you're like, I'm only here for one day or two days and I want to do this. Yeah. So not going to be on. But then you tell them you get that opportunity to be like, do you need anything from me? Yeah. Like knowing that I'm not here and then them being like, nope, we're good. And if a situation comes up, Amanda, step in coach, like you're taking the reins on this because mm -hmm. you and Spencer are not there. Yep. Or and they unavailable. know what to do. And I think just being able to trust your team yeah. and being like, Hey, I may trust you and you may fail, but we'll learn. Yeah. Like, I think that was big. And that actually was when we all went to Croatia last year, like Spencer and I were gone for like six weeks in the middle of summer, which is like our massive high season and things hit the fan for sure. Yeah. But then we realized that the team figured it out. Right. Yeah. Like they may not have known what to do at first, but then they just figured it out. Went with it. Yeah. yeah. So now we know, okay, when this happens, we'll do this. Like, I think it's just trusting that things happen. And as long as the chaos happens behind the scenes, so owners can't see. Mm -hmm. And I think you may understand yeah. that too, where like 
things are chaos behind the scene, but to them, they look like great. seamless. <laughs> yeah. hundred yeah. percent. And that literally just made me think of like, with again, Paris, I, I asked my team saying like, how was that for you? Like me being away, how did it go? And they both said, oh, so great. Um, I actually got, cause they always have like an ongoing like task list. Um, and then it usually just gets added to it. Cause I was like, Hey, like we need to do this for this, whatever. And then they both said something similar of this was like the first time I almost got my task this time because I wasn't talking to you every day for you adding on more stuff. And I was <laughs> like, that's almost like a good thing because yeah. finally we made some improvements rather than me just always, Hey, and do this and add this and then do this. But it's like, because I removed myself from the day to day. And then when I came home after the jet lag, after the events, after moving all, which was like literally in a week being home, mm-hmm. I was able to like take a step and be like, okay, I feel so much more refreshed. How does everybody else feel? What do we need to do? Like, let's get back on track. But they were always on track. They like, they never went off the track. But for me, I removed myself from the business for a little bit and then sat back into it and being like, okay, like we're good. You know what I mean? Like I would just went on a trip, but the business still ran and it was, it ran like, like, I want to say the word flawlessly because it did. Like there was a no issue. And then again, each trip is different where it's like, I could tell you nightmare stories and I feel like it's only gotten better than that, where it's like, you as, as the owner and as the boss, you need to realize what's working and what's not working and just continue building on that. Yeah, totally agree. And I think you have to decide too, like what kind of work you want to do. Like, do you want to be able to go away for a, for a week and like unplug? Yeah. Then you have to build systems around making sure that can happen. Yeah. And I, th- and I think people forget that with every business, it's like, like you're just testing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Everything is a freaking test. Yeah. And some things fail and then things happen. You're like, okay, we need to put a system in place so that never happens again. And then you do that. Like, you're not going to be able to build a business. You're like, I did that perfectly for the first time ever. Right. Yep. That it's won't all happen. Learning. Yeah. We have no idea what we're doing. No, we're, we're just trying our best. We've been making it up ever <laughs> yeah. since we started. Right. And yeah. things just kind of kept, kept working. But I think just being super confident in our, in your people and, and not just saying, Hey, you did that wrong. Don't do this. There are things that we'll wake up after like eight hours. Their day has already been going all day. Cause yeah. we're 12 hours ahead. And we look back on some of the messages and I'm like, man, like Amanda's really good. Oh, I like love she said that better than I would say that. <laughs> and that's something typically I would have responded to, but yeah. now I'm like, she can do that. Yeah. Right. Like they learn. I heard something that I totally agree with. And it's like, you want to hire, like you kind of touched on this early earlier, you want to hire people that are better than you. Oh, yeah. And it's like, because if I hire seven people that are here, then it's like seven Courtney brains, which nobody wants. <laughs> but it's like, if I hire, that's scary. Yeah. yeah, yeah like let seven little Courtney's running around and it's like, holy shit. Um, <laughs> but if I hire seven people that have strengths that are like bigger than mine and have different strengths than mine where my, it's a weakness for me and it's their strength and then their weakness, but might be, you know, the other team members strength. Like that's what I want because I want, I don't like, I think you limit yourself as a, as a company to how big and like how big your business can go. If you're only hiring people that are like less experienced or not as great as you. If you make yourself the standard and only hire better, like to be like a business owner and to be as you and I would say, I would say we're both very hungry for success. So if we hire people that are only better than that, like I feel like that business is going to be unstoppable. Absolutely. And there's a lot of things that Spencer and I are not great at. Yeah. Right. And so building your team around other people who are amazing at that one. Now I don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not good at it and I likely don't like it. Right. And then two, like they excel at it. And it's just a one thing I have to like, not worry about. Exactly. And I think another big thing is like, especially new entrepreneurs have this feeling of, I have to work all the time, seven days a week, 10 hour days. It can only be me. And I honestly feel like that culture is starting, I hope to like slip away because like you're going to burn out Mm -hmm. like anyone out there who's like building a business, take a vacation. Yeah. Like you need time off. Right. And how you want to structure that if your business is like kind of like ours, where it's like literally all the time, there really are no weekends and off days, then you, you need systems in place in order to give you that time off because you started this business 
because you're very entrepreneurial and you're very driven, yeah. but you can't be those things if you're exhausted and burnt out and in the weeds all the time. And I, I think like with that, I feel like for me, I'm just having like flashbacks of like a few, even a few months ago before yeah. I hired Rebecca and Shannon. And it was just, I feel like that was me. And I feel like I stayed up forever, like so late working on the business because I was like, this is a temporary pain, but it's going to be a, like a long-term success. Like that was my goal. Temporary pain, so tired, so exhausted. You literally could say the wrong thing to me and I'd have a breakdown and cry because I'm like on zero hours of sleep. And it's like, but I, I knew that I was putting in that hard work to have, like, I, I basically gave myself the first quarter of the year. I'm like, okay, this is like my, my growth period. But it's funny because John and I's word for the first six months of the year is stabilize. So we were, we we're trying to stabilize our life, like with everything included. But for me, I'm like, this is my growth and like stabilized period growth period in the way of like get new employees, hire a team with like that, with people that are more skilled in specific things where it's like, I'm not saying, Oh, I hired you and you, here's your 20 like item task list or like job responsibilities. It's like, no, I want to divide that up and, and keep like, even with this podcast, it's like, we've outsourced this. So a team does this because why would I do it? Like, I don't know how to do it and I'm not going to learn. Like I don't want to. So it's like hiring people and putting them in their positions. But I feel like it took a very long time of sleepless nights to do that. But that with the, with the goal in mind that this is going to get better. And then I was able to hire this team. And now it's like, I go to bed, like out like a light by like 10 30. And I'm like, I'm getting my eight hours. Everything's great. I wake up. I'm like, I know like every, you trust in that team, which only makes your like overall life better. But I feel that that was like a hard thing I had to get through. And I had to see what was on the other side before even like being there and just no, like I it was so clear what I wanted, but I had to, in my opinion, I had to put in that work to get there. And now my busy work days look completely different than my busy work days in January which I is love that. nuts. <laughs> I remember you and I talking about this a lot yeah. back when you were doing that. And I was like, you need You're to fucked. stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was bad. You were doing so much. It was. Yeah. And again, it's like, and I, the last question I want to ask you, um, not necessarily related to travel, but I'm with expanding the team for my business. I'm curious, how do you, we talk about, you know, trusting your team and, and all of that. And it's, I, I, definitely believe, and you've said this before too, you'd rather hire people and make less money than work more hours, do things you don't enjoy doing, all of that. I'm the exact same way. It was very hard to do that first because you're seeing how much money you're paying people and you're like, oh, <laughs> I could have, you know what I mean? But then it's like, you realize that you're getting eight hours of sleep. You have work-life balance. You're getting there. You know what I mean? So how do you, what do you look for when you hire? So recruitment was kind of my background, right? Because okay. I, I was HR. in HR for, yep. for such a long time and I loved recruitment because I love meeting people and talking to people. So I was never really afraid of recruitment. Um, but what it, it what you look for really depends on the position, yeah. right? But a lot of people will just be like, oh, you have a great resume, you're hired. And I think that's really wrong because mm -hmm. there needs to be fit between yourself and the employee, but also with the rest of your staff, yeah. right? Because you can't just bring someone in who may know everything, but no one likes them. Yeah. Like you yeah. are just causing yourself so much pain in the future of people just coming to you and complaining, right? Yeah. So I look for trainability. I look for eagerness to learn. That is massive. Um, eagerness to take on new tasks on their own. Like I, I don't want someone to just kind of coast by. I want them to, to just slowly start doing other things. Yeah. And then we can say, hey, are you actually interested in that? Because yeah. I'd love to give you that task and we can like train you on that. Mm -hmm. Right. Or someone who says, Hey, like, I know that this is typically your job, but I think I can take it on. Like, yeah. perfect. I want that. I want yeah. that. Like I want someone who's able to do that. Um, someone who doesn't ask questions would be like a red flag. Mm -hmm. Um, if anyone's going into an interview and some, like at the end, they're always like, do you have any questions for us? Like always have questions Yeah. because think, <laughs> yes, because an interview is two ways. Yeah. Like, it's not just like the manager hiring. It should be like, you. do you want to work for that person yeah. Yeah. doing that job? Like, mm -hmm. this is an interview two ways, right? So someone who's that. asking questions and, and curious. 
and it's annoying when you know you have someone asking a lot of questions when you're training and stuff mm -hmm. but honestly like it's then like, they can take it and run and they want it to be right yeah and i want someone who wants who's going to ask and be annoying yeah. because they want the right information yeah. but they're going to do the right job right and those questions should be here's your answer and it's like a one-time thing and then you don't ask that again if they're asking the same question 10 times okay <laughs> What are you not getting it? Like, you know what I mean? But, or am I not explaining it yeah. right? Or am, how can I help you? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. do you need this written down? Yeah. Like, it could be that I'm just telling them, but they don't learn that way. Right. Maybe I'm like, okay, maybe I need to show you. Yeah. Maybe this needs to be something that's written that's down. Point. Like Amanda with like the SOP. She's yeah. like, I kind of need something written. Like, okay. Yeah. So it's, it's annoying for me. Sure. But as like a manager, that's how you're a good manager. You have to like adjust your managerial style for each individual person based on their needs. Yeah. Yeah. So to 2.0 that it's, if somebody's asking the same question 10 times, that's a good answer. You're like, you're saying, did I not explain it right? You know, the first nine <laughs> and what can I do to make sure you feel confident in having this information. So mm -hmm. this is the last time, yeah. you know what I mean? And then that way, cause yeah, I love people like and team members that are asking questions because I would rather be asked a question 20 times then you use your judgment and it'd be wrong. Right. And like, then the client's like, this is wrong. You know what I mean? And then it's like, you could have just asked, you know what I mean? So yes. I totally agree with that. I think that's really, really great advice. I think another one too is knowing yourself. Yeah. Because for me personally, I may come across, this sound really bad, I may come across nice. Um, but, <laughs> <You are nice. laughs> but under pressure, I'm a lot, I'm, I'm not as like, I'm not going to say, how was your day? I'm mm -hmm. just going to be like, what do you need? Yeah. Right. I'm going to be very direct. Yeah. Right. I like that too. <laughs> when I'm under pressure and you may not know that I'm feeling pressure. Mm -hmm. So then you're like, wow, Ashley is snapping or yeah. Ashley's really short today. Mm -hmm. What a B, you yeah. know, I, I don't know. So I actually tell them like, Hey, and I try to tell them ahead of time. Like mm -hmm. if someone's messaging me quite a bit and I'm like, look, this isn't a good time for me just because I'm super overwhelmed. So I yeah. don't feel like I'm going to do my best for you. Yeah. Or if it's like an ASAP situation, when we get on the call, I'd be like, Hey, sorry, I don't have a lot of time. I need to just get to the point. I do hope you're well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, or so that. they're not getting off the phone being like, okay, what did I, what did yeah. I do? Yeah. Why is she acting all been like there. this? Yeah. Sure. But I know that about myself. Yeah. Right. That's a, and that, I think that's great too. Cause it's just like with that, I feel like the way that I have told my team is I, I, I say that, as like a one-time statement, but then I like remind them where it's like, I am very dry. I'm very to the point. You, I need you to have confidence in yourself to know that you've done nothing wrong until I say you've did this wrong. Like, you know what I mean? Like you will know if you've done something wrong, but don't ever, because I'm the type of person that if you were to be like, okay. And I'm like, are you mad at me? So like, I'm talking to myself, you know, but like telling this to my, my team, because the best way that my team has said it, Shannon's like, you text like my dad. And I'm like, and it's like literally, nice. yeah, like, thanks. Like THX, like, K period. Like not, I don't K bomb people, but like, <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Sounds good. Like very dry. Like my dad texts exactly like that too. So when she said that, I was like, that's a good way to put it. You know what I mean? Like very to the point, whatever. But I think if you give that message out, everybody's on the same page. They're being like, that's just how Ashley talks. And then again, if, if you're having like an extra rush day or a pressure day, you can even say, Hey guys, just to let you know, this is, I'm just busy today. So going to keep this short. Everyone's doing great. Bye. You know yeah. what I mean? And, but no, I think that's awesome. Um, I just wanted to say thank you again for coming on the show. I feel like we literally could do like a separate episode just of talking about, you know, the hiring and the team. And again, a deeper dive into business that, obviously we're entrepreneurs, but that I feel like so many other entrepreneurs think about, don't know about because it's a lonely world. You know what I mean? So I'm really happy we could really hash out some of the tips for taking a trip as an entrepreneur, because again, it's that feeling where you're excited, but you're stressed and you're overwhelmed. You're like, but I'm still excited. So I feel like I really hope this helps for any entrepreneurs listening. And thank you again, Ash. Thank you for having me. Cheers. I want to give a huge shout out to this week's Glam Squad, Heather from HH Bridal Hair and Nails by Lillian for the fresh set. Thank you so much, ladies. Like always, you guys crushed it. <laughs>